This is Friday, October 25th, 2013. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Boris Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Raymond Hoyt. Welcome, Raymond. May I ask when you were born? April 24th, 1925. And where were you born? <laughs> I was born in a little old mass, mm -hmm. came into the world there, mm -hmm. and lived in Milford, New Hampshire. Okay. What did your parents do for a living? Uh, one was a jeweler, but he ended up as a bus driver for the team. Mm -hmm. And my mother worked in the mills, the Lowell Mills. Mm -hmm. Did you have any brothers or sisters? Nah, eight. Eight? Eight, eight brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> really nine, but one less, lasted only a day. Oh. What is your marital status? My status? Your marital status. A uh, Catholic. Status. You're, you're, I'm a you, widow. You're a widower, okay. And do you have children? Five. Do you have any grandchildren? Five. And do you have any great-grandchildren? Two. And what town do you currently live in? Rosendale. Okay. So tell us what Milford, New Hampshire was like growing up. I never grew up there. I was uh, six months old and we left Milford, New Hampshire, and he gave up his business. Mm -hmm. And he, we went to Boston, mm -hmm. East Boston, I think it was. Where his, uh, my father's brother lived. Mm -hmm. And from there we went to South Boston. Stayed there until uh, I got married. What was South Boston like when you were growing up there? Well, there was no projects. Mm -hmm. It was open ground, open air ground, and we were near Columbia Park, mm -hmm. which was the park in front of uh, the ocean. Mm -hmm. So we grew up in the in the dumps of where, where Boston College is now, mm -hmm. uh, the high school. And University of Mass is there, but they're built mm -hmm. on dumps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were dumps there. And about May, May we would go swimming off a mile road, which mm -hmm. leads into uh, what the projects are now. Okay. But we were, we were always out. Where did you go to high school? Roslindale High, which is defunct now. It turned into West Roxbury High School. Mm -hmm. While you were going to high school, were you aware of events in Europe and Asia at the time? No. no? I had uh, 
a gap of uh, of three months in my junior year. Mm -hmm. I had uh, typhoid fever. <laughs> mm. You say, how did you get that? <laughs> Got it by ice skating. You got typhoid fever by ice skating? Yeah, there's a little pond near the Faulkner Hospital, uh -huh. right in back of it. And uh, we would play hockey there, and you would get thirsty, you poked a hole in the ice. And you drank the ice? You drank the water. Oh, Lord. I always did. Mm -hmm. And something was in the water. Yeah. Oh dear. And I had the typhoid. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you remember where you were, what you were doing when Pearl Harbor was bombed? December 1941. 41. I was in high school. Mm -hmm. That was about the time that I had the uh, typhoid fever. So I lost about three months, made mm -hmm. them up, and then another year came along. I was 42, mm -hmm. graduated from high school. Uh, you graduated from Rosendale High in cl uh, with a class of 42? Yeah. Okay. And in 42, I was in, in town, Boston down near Scully Square. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we were, oh, we went to a theater, and I saw a good picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was all Marine Air Force. Uh, I forget the name of the picture. Do you I remember? Think that, okay. I think that triggered my thoughts. Uh -huh. And, uh, I decided that uh, the Army couldn't take me because I wasn't old enough. I was only 70. So they said the Navy or the Marines can mm -hmm. take you at 17. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go. I asked my mother and father. Mm -hmm. They had enough kids as it was. Okay, so where and when did you enter the military? Uh, July 7th, mm -hmm. July 42. And where did you enter? In Boston? In Boston. Okay. And did family or friends enter the military the same time as you did? No. No. They stayed home with their mothers. Mm -hmm. And then they were about a year or two, and they were in it. Mm -hmm. Where were you sent for basic training? <laughs> There's only two places. One on Paris Island, mm -hmm. South Carolina, I think it is. And the other one is at the uh, West Coast. Mm -hmm. I take it you went to Paris Island? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what that was like. Hell. Mm-hmm. Hell. You minded your P's and Q's. Uh, or you'd get hit, or swore at, or smacked with a rifle, but, and there was no air conditioning or anything else. Did our own washing and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a hell hole. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I, 
Uh, I had not gone home. We didn't get any furloughs or anything else. The whole outfit was together that were breaking into the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, get, I didn't get home until two years. Uh, I was, yeah, two, three years, because I went over the seas. And then in, when I came back, I, that was my first visit home. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get back to BASIC and the immediate aftermath. Did you receive any advanced training beyond BASIC? Well, I went to, after we went to uh, Paris Island, mm -hmm. when we finished training, we were separated, we all became uh, private first class, and for some reason, we were separated and shipped out to wherever they needed us. Mm -hmm. I, I must have passed some sort of a test because they sent me to uh, Jacksonville, Florida for training as an ordinance man. Uh, where in Florida again, please? Jacksonville, Jacksonville. Florida. Okay. They had an, a, a, a base down there. Mm -hmm. So tell us what Jacksonville was like when you were there. I can only remember uh, Just the school, mm -hmm. just the schooling. When they got, we graduated, uh, we were assigned different outfits and mm -hmm. they split us all up. Okay. Do you remember how long you were in ordinance school? Six weeks. And what did you learn in ordinance school? How to uh, How to repair, mm -hmm. repair, and hand, handle the bomb fuses and stuff like that. Mostly it was the small arms. Uh, we went to the machine guns and everything else. We could repair anything when we got through. Okay, so after six weeks in Jacksonville, what happened next? Got shipped to the West Coast, Santa Barbara. California. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went down to San Diego and got shipped out of there overseas to Hawaii. It was a Marine, Marine Air Group mm -hmm. 24 or 12, one of them was the numbers. And it was a, I was introduced to uh, Barbed wire beaches, and we went through the Ford uh, where the Arizona was upside down. Didn't hear. <laughs> I didn't go. Of course, I, I was still 17, and it was all new to me. Mm -hmm. But it, I stayed uh, there in the group for about a month, and then I was getting bored of like hell. So there was a squadron going down to the South Pacific. 
So I asked to get in that, and they put me in. Mm -hmm. And away we went. I was looking at uh, how many ships I had been in. And it was about 13. Mm -hmm. As we went from uh, ship to ship, we manned the guns, the small guns, the 20 millimeters, the machine guns. The, the Navy would operate their own big guns, the, mm -hmm. the five inches and the big rifles. They aren't guns, they're rifles because of the rifling in the barrels. Mm -hmm. Anything with rifling is rifle. So then uh, we ended up in Espirito Santos, where the hell that was, down in the Solomon Islands. And we got together and we went to Guadalcanal from there. There was all the, it was just about the time it was settling down. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, you're, but you're in the sweaty jungles. Mm -hmm. I mean, the jungle, it's hard to explain it, what a jungle is. <laughs> but it's not a pleasant place to stay. Then they, we were parked outside of uh, Henderson Field down there, which was a, a strip of coral that the planes landed on, the, the small planes. They're all bombers, mm -hmm. dive bombers and uh, torpedoes and fighters. That's what was in there, mm -hmm. all single-engine planes. So we worked on them for a couple of couple of months, and they shipped us over to Munda. I thought it was across the, but it was up a little. And Munda, I got introduced to land crabs. I mean, the whole island would move at night. They'd come out. What was the name of the island again, please? Manda. Manda, M A N D A? M U N D A. Okay. Manda. And where, do you remember where Manda is? It was near Guadalcanal. Near Guadalcanal, okay. About 40, 50 miles out. Mm -hmm. And then when I landed there, I think I drove there. Mm -hmm. I think I had one of the trucks and would take it off the, the, uh, at 17, I, I didn't have a license. You, you didn't need a license. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just brought the truck uh, down and looked up and every palm tree had no top. Hmm. It was a big battle there. And I, that stuck with me. I could, I can picture it. Yeah. Hey. Palm trees with no tops and a lot of land crabs. Yeah, well, they were all on the. Uh -huh. uh, well, the, yeah, the strip. There were only strips of coral. The sea bees would put in a strip and nothing flat. Mm -hmm. But they were old people for CBs. They were in their thirties. They were all, they were all uh, mm -hmm. career men, plumbers, mm -hmm. doctors, 
electricians, mm -hmm. they could fix anything. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time you're in the South Pacific, it's, um, I'm taking it's about 1943 or so? Yeah. Okay. 43 and 40, uh, late, late 43, I think. Okay. Early 50, mm -hmm. I got out. Yeah, from, from Munda, we went to uh, Bougainville. Okay. That was a hot and smelly place, and the whole island was shaked. There was a volcano on it. Mm -hmm. It was being a little active. And uh, Yeah, we had the, there was three strips of sea bees to throw up. One, one was for uh, medical. Mm -hmm. One was, uh, no, it was a, fi uh, a fighter strip with just fighters on it. And then there was uh, the single bombers where at the end, the middle, I don't know what the hell they had in mm -hmm. there, but there was uh, another script in the middle. It was just a, like somebody had taken the island and bit a piece of it, and that was us. The rest of it was Japanese. <laughs> and they, they had close to 75,000, we had about 5,000. But it was all jungle, so they couldn't get, they were generally in the middle and the bottom, and it oh, was a miserable jungle. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't really do anything. Besides that, we cut off all their food. Mm -hmm. We had uh, all, the, all this, they, they wouldn't let the, uh, Ships coming down, the Japanese ships, they would, they would bomb them as soon as they saw them leave a ball. They, they were, Japanese were at a ball. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that uh, we uh, would load the planes up and send them up to a ball and the other islands around there. But the main one was a ball. Mm -hmm. And I never knew how pretty that place was, Raval. It wasn't anymore mm -hmm. because uh, the ships in the bay, our bombers took them out. So the, the ones on board, we were, we were loading them. They would go up and drop their load <coughs> and take out whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. But I saw a picture of on television over a while, and it was a different way. Mm -hmm. The thing I was thinking all about was it was just camp, but there were buildings and everything else. Mm -hmm. It was a big place, a big Japanese naval base. And that's the ones we controlled. <coughs> and the ones on Bougainville, the Japanese, they just uh, withered on the vine. They would ta attack every once in a while. And uh, it shoot us up. But in the morning, they would roll out a, I don't know, close to a five inch gun out of the caves in the mountain and fire it at us. They were trying to take the planes out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, and they had, they had crabs at, in that place. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the strips would glow at night because it's all coral. Mm -hmm. Never were, were alive creatures that made it, 
but they they would cover that. It was just black. They even made it black. Mm. They were about that size, uh -huh. and they just came out and they didn't bother anything. But you couldn't move. Mm -hmm. You'd get up in the morning, pick your equipment up, and they, they would be scattering still. It was a funny, oh, uh, as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, the only time uh, that I got uh, scared, I never thought that I would die or anything out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Japanese were attacking, but they were kind of slow. And they were shooting. You know, the bullets were going in all directions. Mm -hmm. So I, I made a dive for the year. Uh, Foxhole, and I made it, and I reached over for my rifle, and it was back in the damn tent. Oh, no. The tent was full of holes, uh, but uh, it was like a wife, the rifle. You never were caught without it. Mm -hmm. It was part of us. We were all trained as infantrymen. Every Marine went through infantry training. So we were uh, uh, we weren't uh, people that were uh, what can you say it was? No, well, the, the, even the pilots went through. They were, they were good, the pirates. They, they weren't uh, out of college or anything else, and if they did, they still got, but I think they took their training in Quantico, mm -hmm. Virginia. So then uh, we were told by some stupid general or admiral, because the big guns that came in at night above the Navy ships, and they would fire over our heads into the jungle where the chaps were, and you could hear them whistling as they went over. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, why don't we go on back? And some general or admiral said, you're expendable. That's nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice thing to hear. <laughs> yeah. I, I had been out about oh, 12 months, at least 12, 14 months. Most of it in the Pacific, mm -hmm. but we got no rest and recreation. There was no R&R. &R. The pilots and their gunners went down to Australia and had a ball. Well, you got stuck with the land crabs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, we, did. we were the stupid ones. Mm. But, uh, it was an experience. Mm -hmm. They had uh, they had two out outfits with us. Uh, I don't know with, whether they were to help us or to protect us. Mm -hmm. I never figured it out. But they would go out at night. They were the Fiji Islanders, mm -hmm. the Fiji people. They would go out at night and go into the jungle. 
and killed Japanese and anything they met. And then they would come back in the morning. <laughs> and they had an Australian, I think, uh, that was their officer in command. Mm -hmm. He was just as straight as an arrow. Yeah, the Fiji Islanders, and they were all tall. Uh -huh. They were all about six foot. And they uh, little guys. Mm -hmm. We never had tall guys. They were all about five, seven, five, eight. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, and I don't know how we got off that island. I know we went by boat. Mm -hmm. Some of them went by plane down to uh, Espirito Santo Street. We left there. Garden about June, July. Let's see. Oh, You're yeah. mentioning June or July. Are we now in 1944, 45? It was 40, 44, okay. 45. Where was I? It's 45. I got out in 46. No, they were sending us home because we were falling on our south, uh, we'd get in a truck or something and we would fall down. Mm -hmm. We could hardly stand. And they said, send them home. Send that up at home. So home we came. Mm -hmm. We went down to Esperito Santos and caught a, caught a ship out. The whole outfit was shipped out. Not on the Navy ships. They, were, they had uh, troop ships. Mm -hmm. They went out on them. We went out on them. And we, yeah, every place we went, we had a, a different ship. Mm -hmm. We would man the guns and everything, and then Well, there are some kind of shotguns, but uh, we left uh, Esperito Santos and headed home. Hmm. And it took about close to a month to get up to the 3,000 miles or so because they never went in a straight sign. It was mm -hmm. all this crap going right. back and forth. Z all the way back. And when we got uh, close to the uh, United States, we were told, get rid of everything. You're going to get all new uh, clothes and stuff. Dump it, everything overside. Mm. That was before we got to the bridge, <laughs> you know, the Golden Gate. So we threw it away. We got all brand new clothes and when we got there. We got to the uh, Fort uh, tre Treasury Island. Treasure Island? Or Ford. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a uh, Let's get back. Near San Francisco. Okay. Let's get back a moment to the clothes you were wearing while you were in the South South Pacific. Uh, were they adequate for what you needed? And what do you mean needed? Well, uh, <coughs> food or <laughs> uh, food, clothing. Was it was it adequate? No, on Guadalcanal we got. Crackers and what the hell? What, 
Well, over the over there was just water and crackers. Mm -hmm. They were out of food. So we we lived on crackers and water for a week until they could get. That's when we were on the canal. Uh huh. We didn't think too much of it. Mm -hmm. We knew it sooner or later. They would they would hunt the uh, pigs in the jungle. They had a little uh, the pigs and they had a kitchen. They had a they set up little kitchens. And they go down to the river, the Longa River, I think it's called. Right around the back of Henderson Field. And throw a grenade in the water and pick up the dead, dead fish and they it exploded. They didn't need cooks and stuff. And we don't know what we were eating. What about your clothing? Uh, did you have like uh, light tan t-shirts or um, adequate rain gear for whenever it rained? No, we had short pants on. Uh-huh. And the sun was so damned hot down there. I don't know. I think it was about 100 miles south of the equator. Oh. It was very, very hot. Mm -hmm. and. Muggy, very muggy, and you throw, you put your wallet down, and uh, in about a a week, it would be all moldy. Ew. Yeah, it only took about a week. <coughs> now, you could see the rain coming. It was heavy. It was dark, and it would be coming. And you just go out and take a shower. Mm -hmm. Used everything. We used everything there was. Mm -hmm. Because the Lister bags were full of booze. They were making <laughs> they were making their own booze. Then yeah, they were tight they were tight. Mm -hmm. And if there was anything that was, uh, oh, I know what they, once in a while we would get a, like a six pack, three beers and three Cokes, I think it was. So we would swap off. And give the beer to the beer uh, drinkers, mm -hmm. and they would give us their cokes. <laughs> so it evened out. Uh -huh. By then, I was an old hand at it. Eighteen, I was eighteen then, nineteen. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it was nineteen, eighteen, mm -hmm. nineteen, and I was out here. Eighteen months, I think. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, a year and a half. Okay. While you were um, in the South Pacific, were you able to follow uh, the the war unfolding in the South no. Pacific and elsewhere? No, no communication. No, we uh, even the letters I brought mm -hmm. we were all censored. Mm -hmm. On the three, uh, not. Yeah, they were all censored every time. Mm -hmm. They were afraid the Japanese would figure out who was here, who was there. Of course, we were outnumbered, but the uh, the, the Americans, uh, I don't know, if I forget which outfit it was, came in on the lower end of the uh, Bougainville and attacked. It uh, took the weight, weight off us. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to defend ourselves anymore. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the, uh, it was a grind. It was a grind. But you didn't think one big happy family. <coughs> I mean, they wouldn't steal or anything among their own. They would go down to the army base and steal from them. Mm. Jeeps, anything they get their hands on. And bring it up and strip it and color it green. The same as the green cloth thing. Mm. Yeah. And there was natives. There were some natives there. They had pointed teeth and they were black. It cooed on beetles. That was beetle nuts. Uh -huh. And it turned their teeth. And it must have been cannibals or something. <laughs> we didn't have too much to do with the natives. Uh -huh. Just the, the ones that worked for us. Yeah, it was just. It was a strange war. Mm -hmm. So after 18 months in the South Pacific, you're finally heading toward the Golden Gate. You're about to get new clothes. Yeah. Tell us what happened next. Well, we get, well, we saw our first death. Uh, Milk. Milk was fresh. Mm -hmm. Oranges. All fresh, a lot of fresh food. And food, like steaks. Oh. <laughs> and then, uh, then they broke us up because uh, they didn't, they thought that we would uh, kill somebody. It was the furthest thing from our mind. We just wanted to get drunk. By then uh, I had, uh, I acquired a, a taste for <laughs> the hot stuff. Mm -hmm. Bourbon, 100 proof bourbon. Whoa. Yeah. And I could put it away, I was what? Twain, mm -hmm. when I landed here. Then we went cross country to Cherry Point, North Carolina. <coughs> How did you travel cross country? By train, by bus? It was a train. By train. Because the whole outfit went. Okay. They broke us up. Mm -hmm. And I, 235, which was the number. Yeah. We went and trained some more, more on, on for new, new stuff that they were bringing in. Then they told us they're going back out. So we crossed country and landed in San Diego, Miramar. So that's it in Miramar. Mm -hmm. And we were getting ready to depart. And they dropped a bomb. And that was it. They said, hold, hold everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't send any more troops out or anything else. Because it was all over. When they dropped the bomb, they dropped the Two bomb. Two of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they stopped everything. Mm -hmm. The Japanese knew they were going to lose everything anyway. 
but uh, it was the best thing. Wiped out, what, less than, I don't know how many people were incinerated. Mm -hmm. Can't count the ashes. Mm. But it was a strange war. Okay. And so then I spent my last 1946 in California. Yeah, they, they, when they came back, when we came back, they had to break us up mm -hmm. because uh, we had left his, uh, a lot of kids. 18 years old, but I think the average age is that in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. I had a, my serial number was 420,000, 420-68. I still remember it. So there was only 420,000 at that time when I went in. Mm -hmm. And the Navy had 3 million. Mm. The Army had 7 million. <laughs> and this pissy ass little Marine Corps was running around doing all the work. Yeah, there were some odd things going on. Well, you're 19, uh, never from got the hurt. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> never got hurt. Yeah. You were very lucky. Yeah, because the guy about two tenths down, he swelled up like a balloon when a bomb went off right be almost on top of him. I thought he was dead. Mm -hmm. He wasn't? No. He just puffed up. <laughs> and the, the blast hit him. Wow. Well, he was standing up, piddling. And the rest of us were in the foxhole because mm -hmm. <laughs> everything was going on. But it was very, very he saw some pretty sights. Mm -hmm. uh, when the when the uh, when the airplane came over, they were spotlighted, and uh, a Japanese plane would be up there, and we say he's gonna watch him closely and see where he's gone. And he was way up, mm -hmm. so. We would back off if he was coming over us, we'd stay in the foxhole. But if he was over a little, then we knew where the bomb was going to land, being an ordnance man, mm -hmm. we could figure it out. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, he, he stood up. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't have stood up. But he was lucky too. <laughs> yeah, he was lucky too. Because I saw him, I went to, I think, one, one convention mm -hmm. later on in life out in uh, with the uh, Omaha. We had a convention in Omaha. And I saw him. I said, I thought you were dead. He said, no. Mm -hmm. They got me to the, uh, it was only a tent, but they got me to the hospital all the time. <coughs> but uh, there were some beautiful sunsets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I saw them from shipboard. Mm -hmm. That was another little act they had. They were, 
they caught fire on a, it wasn't a destroyer, I think it was one below the destroyers. It's a smaller ship. And it caught fire underneath the, uh, the, the ladder. Mm -hmm. And I was on in the corridor, out looking at the water. There was plenty of water to see. Mm -hmm. But uh, he came by. He was a lieutenant, I think. He said, "Maureen, put your hand on the wall, on the bulkhead." And when it gets really hot, let <laughs> us know. I said, pretty crazy. I'm going to stay here. I'll be in the ocean if the fire gets here. I just, I could see myself swimming 2,000 miles or so. <laughs> I don't think I would have made it. <laughs> it uh, yeah, they, they're all in all, it was a great experience and I didn't get hurt. And got a little, uh, my character got uh, kicked around a while, mm -hmm. but it did, uh, it did make me able to complete most tasks that I had or ever had had. Okay. Now you mentioned you were in California in 1946. Were you discharged from there? Yeah. We got, uh, <coughs> I got uh, so much money to take the train or the mm -hmm. buses or whatever. From there, <laughs> the farthest they could go. It was mm -hmm. travel money from San Francisco, I think it was, mm -hmm. that I just got this chat from, and uh, all the way to Boston. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's across the country. <laughs> And what rank were you when you were discharged? What weight? Uh, rank. Were you still a PFC? No, they gave us all a, a stripe. Uh huh. We were, we were privates, okay. first class, and they gave us a stripe so that it made its corporals. Mm -hmm. And they said, "Now do you got the stripe? You want to?" Uh, Sign over? <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they crazy? I'd had enough. I had seen the world as far as I was concerned. So what happened afterward? When well, I got out? After you were discharged and you're back in Boston, tell us what happened next. Then I went and straightened out my, uh, it took a year, but I straightened out the family. Because mm -hmm. my family was uh, dysfunctional <laughs> by that time. They were run running wild. What happened? They grew up. Oh dear. And there was, there was a, a Navy town. Uh huh. So I had six sisters and two brothers. Mm -hmm. So they were mostly sisters, which are targets for Navy people. And uh, the mother was working at the same time she mm -hmm. worked in the shipyard. And she was a welder. 
Your mother was a welder? Yeah, she's a woman that couldn't read or write. Wow. She came from Newfoundland. Uh-huh. And up here in Newfoundland, I guess they don't believe in educating their kids. Mm. Yeah. They used to pick her up in Rosendale Square and take her down to the shipyard and then bring her home at night. So, of course, the kids were wild. Mm -hmm. And the old man was working swing shifts. He got through about 10 to 30 at night. So there was no, mm -hmm. no discipline. So it took me close to a year mm -hmm. to straighten that damn place out. Wow. But uh, that was all under the bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was straightening them out, I was getting more peaceful, <laughs> you know? I was getting more mild myself. Did you go to college? I went, uh, I had my choice. Mm -hmm. BU was just building, mm -hmm. and Harvard was across the river. I had my choice of Harvard or BC. I mean, BU. Mm -hmm. So I took BU because I didn't want to go across the river into Cambridge. Mm -hmm. He had a way to streetcars and buses that weren't there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went to college for about six, seven months, eight months. I don't know how long, but uh, I couldn't concentrate on stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was useless. But I also looked over and there's kids, 18 years old, 17, coming out of high school. I said, what the hell am I doing in here with a bunch of kids? I was only 21 myself. So I applied to the state police, and they, I passed their exams, mm -hmm. except one little glitch. They said, you have one eye, it's a little weak. We can't use you. Mm -hmm. They don't have, they weren't allowed glasses. They were the same as Marines, mm -hmm. but it pays more. <laughs> it paid more <laughs> at the time. So I applied to them and I said, well, I just went and had a physical coming out of the Marine Corps. Then I remembered, they said, cover one eye, all right, read that. Cover the other eye, read that. I said, it's a little blurry. He said, open both eyes. Okay, now it's clear. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> and they said, that, that's what they discharged me. Yeah, and they should have. But uh, I had, meanwhile, I had put in for the tea. It wasn't the tea then, it was the uh, Mm -hmm. MB, Massachusetts Bay, MBTA. Mm -hmm. No, that was a long one. It was MTA. Mm -hmm. Now it's the MBTA. And I passed all that stuff. And I went to work for them for 35 years. What did you do? There, uh, what you do there, at the MTA? Operator. Operator. Okay. Streetcars, buses, trackers, trolleys, mm. all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, but then I noticed that uh, 
It was the same as the Marine Corps. <clears throat> yeah. People just uh, are the same. They are clicky. Yeah. And I don't like clicks. Mm -hmm. I mean, Any time a person takes a test, and before the test is done, they tell, somebody will tell you how it's going to come out mm -hmm. before you even take it. Hmm. I said, that's it. So most of those, the starters and the inspectors and the, the lower management was all political. Uh -huh. A bunch of Irishmen from Mission Hill in Boston. <laughs> yeah, so. Raymond, after you left the Marine Corps and you're getting adjusted to civilian life, did you uh, join any organizations like the VFW, the Legion? No, not until about oh, 10 years later. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a family. Then I joined, I, somebody taught me in joining in the uh, VFW Boston Commons Union. Uh -huh. It had a VFW outfit. They had a place over in Fields Corner, Ashmont. I rose to, I rose up to commander there. I was past the three Marines in the world became commander, commander, commander. Uh, yeah, that uh, I didn't hang around out there, but it was a place that take kids to a Christmas party and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No, I didn't, I wasn't, uh, I don't like beer anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it when on a cold one on a hot day, but mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't into liquor at the time. Because I had to, I was driving buses, you mm -hmm. couldn't, drive buses and be drunk or have a hangover. And when you left the Marines, did you uh, receive any medals or commendations? We got, uh, we got a couple of commendations, but uh, I don't think anything went with them. In mm -hmm. fact, the last one I got was uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know what the ribbon stands for. It's uh, some sort of a, you were here or you were there, or mm -hmm. it's a little yellow ribbon. Mm -hmm. But I got the, well, we all got them, I think, the uh, Asiatic Pacific ribbon. Mm -hmm. A uh, good conduct ribbon, the American ribbon, I think. It's a nice, pretty blue in it. <laughs> but the, you had to buy it on yourself. Mm -hmm. So nobody, nobody bought any unless mm -hmm. they were going to show them off to somebody. Yeah. There was one other ribbon. Uh, probably a defense ribbon or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the only one that I respect is the agent one. Was out there, everything happened. Right. You mentioned a couple of members of your outfit uh, while you were talking about your experiences in the South Pacific. Are there any other memorable characters or experiences that come to mind?
No, they were all crazy. The sea bees were which stands for construction battalion. Mm -hmm. They were like fathers to us because they were old. They had they had eggs and everything. They raised chickens and everything. <laughs> and you had crabs. We had crap. <laughs> Raymond, is there anything else you'd like to say uh, for this interview? No, not really. Okay. I'm getting old, that's all. <laughs> I'm breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> Raymond Hoyt, we thank you so much for coming in and taking part in the Native Veterans Oral History Project.